PC building is kind of hard, let's be honest, until it's not. You've got to get through a few of these and make a bunch of mistakes before you kind of, I guess, feel comfortable. And I've made a lot of mistakes, embarrassing mistakes. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to build this PC. I've got Gabe with me here because he knows a lot more about PC building than I do. And hopefully what will happen is I get to ask a bunch of stupid questions so you don't have to. As I showed before, what we are planning to do in this room, this is the Division streaming room, is update a bunch of the equipment. This build will be used hopefully for a bit of encoding. You could equally use this build for gaming, basically anything. It's kind of a mid-range all-purpose build that you can do anything with. It's all going to be built inside this Be Quiet case, which I guess is... Uh, how would you explain this one, Gabe? Uh, it's a pretty standard case. It's also built around this Ryzen 5 chip. No, it's a really cost-effective CPU, both for, for gaming, it's fairly solid. We have this adorable 1050, which is which is tiny and cute. Once we get this out of the box, you'll be able to see it. There's the B350F. Pretty standard SSD, 500 gigs. Two sticks of 8 gig DDR4 RAM. The Corsair H60 water cooler. I've never used one of these. Today we're going to get this all in the case and get it posted and just uh, check that it all works. It's not going to look shiny today. I'm scared. I'm scared too. All right, first things first, we've got to get the motherboard out of the box and on top with the anti-static to make sure that we can get a few things done first. As we mentioned earlier, we're going to be using the Ryzen 5 chip for this build somewhere in there. Yep, pull it out of its packaging carefully. Make sure it comes out nice and neat. The pins are on the bottom of the CPU, so it's real important that you also put stickers on your hands because everybody likes stickers. You're going to want to unhook the retention arm off the CPU because well, that's what's going to hold the CPU in place. So if it's down, the CPU is not going to go in. All right, make sure that you line up the triangle with the triangle on the motherboard and it should drop in nice and easily. Give it a little wiggle when you can to make sure that it's all in nice and safe. But be careful that you don't bend any pins because that's going to be the bane of your existence if you make that happen. Oh, a real sad story. As I mentioned earlier, this is the first time I've ever used a water cooler for a build, and thankfully, it comes pre-pasted. What's funny is, uh, this is the first time you've used a water cooler. This is the first time I've installed an all-in-one water cooler. Right. I've done water cooling uh, by itself. You'll want to refer to the manual to make sure that you're using the correct bracket. Yeah, there are quite different ones. So there's different ones for Intel, AMD. AMD, I mean, yeah, refer to the package. All right, the two sticks of RAM is pretty straightforward. You'll see four slots on the motherboard. It might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but the slots that you'll want to use, uh, as it says in the manual here for us, it was A2 and B2, they won't be next to each other. Yeah, they'll actually be cross-channel, but it's important that it lines up with the A2 and B2, and putting RAM in is fairly straightforward. Usually you want to push down on one side until it feels like it's in, and then push down on the other side, and then it makes a nice little click on each side, so it's pretty it's pretty clear when they're both in. Yeah, don't force it, because it's uh, it should go in pretty easily. There's some hidden case accessories inside one of the drive bays, including a lot of screws and that sort of thing, so make sure to take those out and set those aside. So this is probably the most important part of your entire build, which is the IO shield. If you forget that, you're going to be really sad because then you're going to have to take everything out of your PC and start over. Sounds uh, like you've done that before. Uh, yes, uh, a pretty high success rate with forgetting that shield. With the cooler that we're using, we don't need this fan on the rear, so we're taking that one off, and we might be reusing that later in the build. So set that one aside. If you look at the motherboard layout in the manual, you'll actually see that there are nine slots, but in this one, there was only eight screws. Debated, because actually one of those slots is for a post that's on the case. So eight screws, nine holes. Since we're focusing on getting our computer to post today, we're going to need the front panel buttons plugged in, our power button, and all that sort of stuff. So refer to your manual for this one, because there's a lot of intricate little things that need to go on very, very specific points. But those, where you plug those in will actually always be at the bottom of the motherboard, so you just need to find the, the correct little pins, and yeah, as mentioned, follow the, the manual to see where exactly they go. Uh, spoiler alert, it's really difficult to get those in, because they're really small. Uh, but I'm sure you'll manage. So next we're going to go install the all-in-one CPU cooler. 
Uh, we decided to put this on the back panel just mostly because it fits. Uh, also, make sure you look at your fan because it'll tell you what direction it's going to be pushing air. Generally, the back fan is used as an exhaust fan. It's going to be pushing hot air out. It also fits real well for a single fan CPU cooler, so we decided to put it back there. So luckily for us, this uh, CPU cooler is pre-pasted, so we don't have to dabble in, you know, is the line technique best or is the dot technique best? But we will look into that in a future video and show you guys how we paste something a little bit bigger. Before we can post, we need to get power into the PC. This EVGA 650 watt power supply is super nice. So we need to get power to the motherboard and the CPU, and then we are good to go. We're not really worried about cable management at this point because the main focus is just, just to get the PC to boot, make sure that all the hardware we have in so far. So uh, don't judge us based on, uh, well, it being real messy right now. Although the last thing you would want is to get it all pretty and then find out that something needs to be changed. Yeah, definitely. That's why that's why posting is probably the first thing you want to make sure you get done because then you can identify problems and hopefully get them fixed. The first time we actually tried posting this machine, we didn't get any signal to the monitor. We think that's because the display port on the motherboard didn't like the cable that we were using. So we decided just to throw in the 1050 and see if that would help us out. The cutest card in existence. Exactly. Also something we discovered is uh, it doesn't even need external power. So slotting this in is real easy. Just find that uh, PCIe slot and boop. It'll also make the inside of your case a little bit more manageable because you have less cables, which is uh, always nice. All right, success, we got it to get to the BIOS and that's all we needed to do for today. Make sure you tune in for our next video. We'll get the inside of this case all pretty and finish off the rest of the things we need to do, like installing the hard drives and that sort of thing. Woo. <laughs> nice. I unscrewed the case already. <laughs> Wait, hold on, I'll put it back. Nobody will All notice. Right, cool. Close enough.